So Prabhupada used an airplane. And then he started using Gargamuni Prabhu. He saw this dictaphone thing in the store. And he was thinking, Prabhupada, this could be good for Prabhupada. Because Prabhupada was typing everything. And he had this really old typewriter. So Gargamuni brought, he actually spent practically his whole month's pay to buy this dictaphone for Srila Prabhupada. It cost something like $150 in 1966. That was a huge amount of money. I know uh, I was working in those days. I had a job. And $150 was over two weeks' pay of working six days a week, nine hours a day. And he bought it for Prabhupada. It was the latest and best dictaphone where you just talk and it records it. And he was wondering if Prabhupada would accept it. And Prabhupada, he taught him how to do it. And from that day on, Prabhupada was using it to translate. He can get, he could translate more every day with that. So technology, science, all of these things we have with us today, Yadubar Prabhu and Narasimha Nanda Prabhu, who are into films and movie making and all these other extraordinary types of devotional service. And, you know, when Yadubar Prabhu first met Prabhupada in Surat, you know, he's a movie maker and he's making, you know, he can make documentaries and everything. Prabhupada didn't tell him, throw your camera in the river Yamuna. (laughs) It's Maya. (laughs) Well, you know, as far as those cameras that he was using, usually they really are Maya. You know, if you go to... uh, you know, so many of the films being made with the same kinds of cameras really are not helping people to put God in the center of their lives. Srila Prabhupada encouraged, like anything, use your camera to spread God's love. Use your talents to spread God's love. George Harrison was a great musician in the Beatles. He asked Prabhupada if he should quit the band and join the temple. Prabhupada said, you have such talent, use it to inspire people to love Krishna. And he did. And when Prabhupada, the last days of Prabhupada's life, Prabhupada was laying in a bed in Vrindavan and he took off one of his rings from his own finger and gave it to, I think, to Krishna Goswami and said, give this to George. Prabhupada was remembering him with such love on his last moments. because he used what he had for Krishna. This is the spirit of Nandotsava. Life is meant to be a celebration. Whether we're brahmacharis or sannyasis or grihastas or vanaprastras or whatever, life is meant to be a celebration. A celebration of our gratitude for Krishna's mercy, Krishna's love, Krishna's beauty, Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's extraordinary gifts. Because Krishna is so beautiful, we could celebrate forever just being grateful that I'm a part of this. To celebrate the good fortune of association of devotees, to celebrate whatever Krishna's given us to utilize in his service. 
Some people may be living in beautiful homes, brahmacharis. I don't know if any of you have seen, they have these little mosquito nets. That's all they, that's their house. <laughs> and they fold up into a flat little circle, yes? And they stash it, you know, behind their little cupboards. There are this, each brahmachari is a cupboard this big, and behind it they stash a little circle. And it's very good technology. You just somehow or other do something to the circle, and it goes, boop. <laughs> and it becomes a mosquito net. And you can just put it anywhere or everywhere. And believe it or not, that's exactly what you do. If you come to the ashram around 11 o'clock at night, which I usually have to do, and everything's dark, you're just like tripping over all these mosquito nuts everywhere you're going. They're in the front courtyard, they're in the terrace, they're in the temple room, they're everywhere. It's like net loca. trying to walk around them, but sometimes they're right against each other. It's very difficult. And then you accidentally kick one and the Brahmachari goes, Arivo, Arivo! <laughs> somebody inside, just sleeping on the floor. But they're happy. You know, when they wake up from Mandalarti, they're smiling. They had such good sleep. <laughs> That's their life. It's beautiful. And other people, they're living in very nice homes. Maybe a flat, maybe a house, maybe a mansion, maybe a palace, whatever it may be. But if they understand this belongs to Krishna, and I belong to Krishna, and let me utilize everything for that, with that spirit. From a brahmachari's perspective, the palace is just a sophisticated mosquito net. <laughs> it's good. Everything's good if our consciousness is good. And we need people in all these different aspects of life. Yes? We need sages living in forests or in ashrams. We need wealthy people, we need farmers, we need everybody together celebrating life, celebrating our good fortune with gratitude. Really, celebration is about gratitude. When we celebrate a person's birthday, it's not just so that, you know, they're going to give us something because we came. Well, that's sometimes the way it is. But really, a celebration of a birthday is we're celebrating because we're grateful to that person. We should all be together toward Krishna in every situation. That is love. Today is New Year's Day. It is January 1st, 2012. When I was a little boy, I remember I was in KG, kindergarten. And I remember every day we would change the date on the calendar. And the year was 1956. And I can still see that calendar clear in my mind. I would just, because to tell you the truth, what my teacher, Mrs. Puzzo, was talking about didn't really interest me, so I would just kind of look at the calendar. <laughs> and I was thinking, when I'd be looking at the calendar, you know, and now it's... Uh, when... I was just looking at the dates one at a time at a time 
we're getting closer to the summer vacation. <laughs> where I don't have to come to this school anymore. But anyways, that calendar had a big impression. 1956. And when you're a young child like that, you never think you're going to live till 2012. But everything's so relative. New Year's Day, traditionally, New Year's Day is a time for reflection because it's the first day of a new year. It's like a landmark in our life. And it's a time to reflect. Krishna's all loving. But when the East, sometimes people, they try to impose our conception, our human conception, on the absolute truth or God. So yes, they're suffering in this world. Why does a loving, good God allow there to be such intense suffering. We all think that way. We've all heard that again and again. For the body and the mind, yes, it's intense suffering. But Krishna is also seeing the soul. The sufferings are not brought about simply by God. He gives us free will. If we misuse our free will re- perpetually, again and again and again, and we're getting worse and worse, the laws of karma are not simply meant to punish us. The laws of karma are meant to transform us. Now for the soul to learn a lesson, sometimes very intense suffering is required from a completely physical platform how could anyone allow anyone to suffer like this but when we see from the perspective of the soul the eternal soul that's full of knowledge and full of bliss because of our free will For some people, unless we go through these kinds of things, the soul never really comes to the right conclusions. So the sufferings of this world are simply meant for transformation. We bring upon them, you know, ourselves, individually and collectively, by the choices we make, but to help us to choose a healthy life, a pure, blissful life, to love God and love each other and be transported beyond birth and beyond death forever. That's the purpose of life. That's the nature of the soul. And every situation is meant to help us to come to the point of transforming our consciousness to seek that and to live by that. So yes, we read about in spiritual or religious histories, the concept of repentance. Repentance is healthy if it's done with the proper consciousness. Repentance is not meant to, meant to make us think that we're just so bad and we're so evil and we just become depressed. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjuna, Arjuna was pretty depressed, actually. What is the use of this depression if you're not doing anything positive? It's meant to rise us up to do the right thing with conviction and determination and with plenty of warning, experienced warning. We don't want that to happen again. So in the new year, when we ponder our mistakes, our mistakes of how we have 
related to Krishna, to God, within as the Paramatma, with our loved ones, with our friends, with the society, within our occupation or whatever. And that repentance is meant to reflect what do I really want in my life and what do I have to do to get there? And it's very important that we do take inventory on a regular basis of what we've done and where we've been. We need shelter. We need guidance. New Year is a time to make these reflections and to help transform our consciousness. Resolutions. I know where I want to go. And with great determination, I'm going to dedicate this year, this life, for this purpose. Krishna has appeared in his name. Kali Kale Namarupe Krishna Avatar. Krishna comes in Kali Yuga as his name. Kaler Dosani De Rajanasti Hekamahan Guna Kirtana Deva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Param Prajet. Age of Kali is an ocean of faults. And we're like little matchboxes in that ocean of fault. But there's one benediction. That simply chanting Krishna's name in the proper spirit of humility and devotion, one can attain the, the ultimate essence of perfection, liberation. To have proper character in our dealings with others, to be an instrument of compassion rather than an instrument of arrogance and greed and lust and envy, and how to do that? We need a strength beyond ourselves. Maya is too strong. We need the association of devotees. And we need to approach the association of devotees or sadhus with the proper spirit. We're coming to serve, not to exploit. We're coming to love. We need the holy name. We need to take shelter of the holy name. It begins by chanting our prescribed minimal every day as qualitatively good as possible. That's a way of expressing our desire to take shelter. And to know that Krishna is not different than his name and to cry out for Krishna because we need him on every level in our relationships with God with each other and also in our activities we want to be as efficient as proficient internally and externally as possible we learn our lessons and we, every year is a time to really move forward and really contemplate, as I said, where we're coming from, what mistakes we've made, what successes we've had, and how to use them all to transform, to move higher together as a community, as a family. In one sense, every new year, we're one year closer to death. We should reflect on that. But we should also reflect if we utilize our time, our moments, within the next year, 
in a spirit of devotion, then we'll be one year closer to eternal life. I wish you happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.